Hey, hope you're doing well. Andy here from Drive Steady, and in this video I'm reviewing the C8 Corvette convertible. And given that I've already driven the coupe variant, I'm genuinely excited about what the convertible has to offer. So I'll be sharing my thoughts on the interior, exterior, and of course taking it for a quick drive. So let's get started with this review of the C8 Corvette convertible. All right, so before getting started, I'd like to give a big thank you to Keys Mercedes for giving me access to the C8 Corvette today. If you happen to be interested in this car or any other new or pre-owned Mercedes product, make sure you give them a call. I've left their information in the description below. Now, let's get started with the C8 convertible and it'll set you back an additional $7,500 over the coupe variant and it now starts at $73,095. But one question someone might ask is, why would I buy a convertible when the coupe already comes with the Targa? Well, there might be several answers to that, but one of them is because Chevrolet designed the Corvette convertible to be as good as the coupe variant. Now, manufacturers generally design the coupe first and then they'll just chop the top, add some rigidity and call it a convertible, but not Chevrolet because they designed the coupe and the convertible at the same time. And therefore you're not really losing much performance in the convertible variant. All right, so now let's switch gears and talk about the exterior. And the C8 is looking better with age, at least in my opinion. Now, it doesn't start at under $60,000 anymore, but it's still an unbelievable car for the money. In the convertible format, I think it looks really, really cool. Generally, convertible cars don't look that great unless they have the top down. But in my opinion, that doesn't apply to the C8 because the more I look at the convertible, the more I think it looks better than the coupe top up or down. The only bummer about the convertible is the fact that you lose the glass engine cover here, but that's what you're gonna have to trade in in order for the top down driving experience. We'll see if it's worth it during the driving portion of the review, but now let's switch and talk about this convertible top. All right, so now I'm on the interior of the C8 Corvette to show you what it's like operating the convertible top here. And the way you use it is via a button here in the window switch panel. And it's the same button to both open and close the top. But the interesting thing is the graphic on this button is only showing the convertible top going backwards or opening. So when I saw this, I was like, oh, wait a minute, is there another button to close the top? but there isn't. It's the same one to both open and close the top. So when you push it down, it will open the convertible top and opening the top takes 16 seconds to complete the operation. And you can do it while moving up to 30 miles an hour, both of which are pretty average and normal for today's convertible top operation standards. Now, one of the cooler things that some manufacturers have pretty much left out of their convertible tops is the ability to open and close the top from outside the car. Now Chevrolet has kind of gone halfway here and you can open your top using your key fob from outside the car. I wish they would have just fully baked in the closing because of that one is also as important. So I wish Chevrolet puts that in maybe in the update or the refresh of the C8 for sure in the next generation. All right, so generally I would have an engine compartment open to show you what the engine looks like. But in the C8 convertible, you lose the ability to see your engine because it's all covered with all the plastic stuff that operates the convertible top. But nonetheless, let's talk about the engine anyway. It's a 6.2 liter, naturally aspirated V8, making 495 horsepower and 470 pounds-feet of torque, of course, with the Z51 package, which I'll talk about here in a second, and also the NPP exhaust. But it's made it to an eight-speed automatic double-clutch transmission, and it's putting power down to the rear wheels only. Now, as a part of the convertible top, there is somewhat of a weight penalty, but it's very small, only 80 pounds. And this is calling to that point where Chevrolet was developing the coupe and the convertible at the same time. And therefore, you're not really losing a lot of performance or adding a lot of weight, which is always important. Don't add weight in a sports car. Now, weight distribution is 40 up front and 60 in the rear to give it more weight back here for that additional traction, of course, this is a rear wheel drive car. It needs all the weight back there to put the power down. And of course, this is a trans axle car as well. It's the same transmission that was used in the GT500, just tweaked a little bit by Chevrolet. They add an additional gear. It's eight gears in the C8, but seven in the GT500. And all of this wonderful stuff equates to a zero to 60 time of three seconds. Now this is astonishing. And again, calling to that point about Chevrolet 
developing the coupe and the convertible at the same time and you're not really losing much performance with the drop top convertible but beyond all of that this does have that naturally aspirated v8 with the baffled exhaust so let me take you around back and you can take a listen to what it sounds like All right, so now let's talk about the wheels, tires, brakes, and suspension. And this car is equipped with the very popular Z51 suspension package. And that nets you several things. Let me highlight some of the notable items, starting off with the dampers. So these are adaptive dampers and they allow you to stiffen or soften the ride based off your driving conditions. You also have the ability to lower the car. Now you also get a limited slip differential in the rear and a performance rear axle ratio for the transmission and the gearing. Now these wheels are 19 inches up front by eight and a half and 20 inches by 11 in the rear. Inside the wheel barrels, you have Brembo brakes. These are an upgrade for the Z51 package. They're 13.6 inches up front, four pistons and 13.8 inches in the rear, four pistons again. Now the tires are 245s up front and 305 section in the rear. Now we'll see how all of this translates during the driving portion of the review. But now let's switch gears to practicality and talk about the interior before we take this thing on the road. All right, so now the interior of the convertible C8 Corvette. And as I mentioned, I've done a review on the C8 Coupe uh, Corvette already. And I did a full review on that interior. So I'm not really going to spend a lot of time here. I'll give you some overview items and uh, kind of uh, give you a test of time here with this one. Because this is a used one. The one I had driven in the Coupe variant was practically a brand new car. So uh, giving you some quality topics as well. So starting off with quality and overall design. Now, the design design of it is very very angular and I think it looks very cool now I'm not sure how uh, it's going to stand up to the test of time but currently it's one of the more unique sports car interiors with a bunch of angles and a bunch of cuts and obviously geared and oriented more for the driver with this wall of buttons and whatnot and I don't have an issue with these buttons here I, I didn't before and I still don't now uh, when I look at them there's really only like three or four buttons that you're going to use all the time anyway so I certainly don't have any issues with the overall design now the quality this is a 3LT interior so it's the top of the line interior and I am seeing some shoddiness of quality that I didn't see in the new one. So on the dash, I can see that some of the leather is like separating from the trim pieces and whatnot. It's only in one area, but nonetheless, you really don't want to see that in a car that's striving to improve the interior from prior generations like the Corvette is. But to that point, the C8's interior is a drastic improvement over any generation of the Corvette. I think they did a fantastic job of kind of building up to this point and hopefully they continue to build on top of that using this as a baseline for future cars or future Corvettes. Now as far as size goes I purposely closed the top so I can give you a perspective of uh, sizing in here and I'm 5'11 I have the seat in its lowest position my head is not or my hair is not touching the ceiling there's probably another inch or two of room uh, but this is a perfect size interior for somebody my size uh, I would imagine somebody a little bit taller than me would fit just fine in here if you move the seat back I don't know, you might be able to squeeze in it, but again, this is one of the contentious topics of the C8 going mid-engine is how big the interior would be for taller individuals. So make sure you sit in it before you buy it. 
Now, as far as the comfort goes, this is a very comfortable interior. And what I mean by that, the overall size of it is really nice for a convertible, I mean, for a uh, sports car. And the seat, this is the GT2 seat as a part of the, uh, the 3LT package. And it was the same seat that I sat in the uh, coupe variant and it's very very comfortable it feels the same here uh, it's even more broken in than uh, the coupe that i drove so no complaints about the seat the ball string is adjustable you can do all the other movements forward backwards it does have lumbar support as well so it's a fantastic seat the gt2 seat all right so now let's switch on over into the technology topic very quickly and of course this has the gauge cluster in all lcd format you've got a heads-up display and an eight inch infotainment system but this is where you really start to see cars that have been out for several years already and of course the c8 was probably designed five six seven years ago at this point but the benefits of the c8 infotainment system and screen is that it's very simple it's very easy to use and easy to get used to it's got all of the functionality that you would need from an infotainment system like nav bluetooth wireless android and apple carplay and all these wonderful uh, android auto and apple carplay sorry i don't want to misstate the terms but it serves its purpose and is a functional infotainment system now some of the other amenities wrapping it up here before moving to the driving portion the steering wheel is heated and that's a feature that i never thought i wanted but wanted more after i started experiencing a heated steering wheel it's really nice to have in cold weather formats as far as charging goes you have uh, one USB type C and one USB type A outlet which is wonderful just in case you have different type of outlets you want to plug into or both driver and passenger want to uh, charge their device. So overall the interior space I really liked when I drove the coupe. I like it here again. The one thing that I fall short on is some of the technology is starting to show its age and that little quality piece on the dash that maybe is a quality control thing maybe not but nonetheless uh, that's something to pay attention to if you're looking for a used Corvette. So with that out of the way, now let's go to what I've been waiting for, the driving portion of the review, and see what this thing feels like behind the wheel. All right, so now the driving portion of the review, and as always, this is what the Corvette key looks like. It's rather underwhelming because it's all plastic, but it does have a cool Corvette badge back here behind the sticker that's on top of it, but nonetheless could use some improving. Now... Uh, as far as price goes, I mentioned that this is now a $76,000 car. It's up several thousand dollars from when it first came out, but I think it's still well worth the price tag and somewhat exceeds the expectations of the price of this car, especially with regards to performance. So now let's go ahead and turn this thing on and go for a quick drive. Start, stop here on the dash. Starts up, nice V8 bark on the startup. And the Corvette exhaust sounds really, really nice. They did a great job in tuning it. So let's go ahead and go for a quick spin. And I'm setting off here in tour mode and in full automatic. And one of the first things you'll notice is as they transition to mid engine, the front end is obviously shorter now. And what that gives is a overall shorter hood to look out in front of you and somewhat of an Ital not Italian, but a European feel or European visibility out the front because most European cars, they've got a short nose or the visibility is done in such a way where when you look out, you almost see no hood line. I can't say I don't see the hood, but I see very little of it. And that's a really nice uh, driving position and good visibility as well. So forget about all that. Now I am in track mode and let's see what this thing's got. I'm just gonna hammer it. Ooh, wow, look at that. Woo! Speed is real nice, downshifts. Very, very nice. Good sensation of speed. I've caught up to a bunch of traffic immediately, but I can tell you right off the bat, this thing absolutely moves. All right, let's put it in first again. Let's see what she's got. Wow. Wow, that DCT is stupidly fast. 
you really got to pay attention this is still very free revving for being um, like an old school engine and it gives you great great speed and the sensation and a very linear power band this is a very predictable engine let's do it again this is really fun this car is very easy to drive fast exhaust pops are really really nice and they're actually very unique as well unlike any exhaust uh, feedback uh, that I've seen in other sports cars it's almost like a chop instead of a park like you're chopping a piece of wood and it sounds really nice actually uh, very addicting to listen to this exhaust now uh, so as far as speed goes very very fast car it's truly remarkable what Chevrolet has done with this car at this price point so now the rest of it let me go ahead and put it back in tour take it out of manual shift mode and let's give it a go for the rest of it so the transmission is unbelievably good now people always say PDK PDK now this is as close to if not meeting PDK performance and I remember it distinctively it's the same thing I felt in the coupe and this is probably one of the only transmissions that really has a chance against PDK it's really really good whether it's in automatic mode it's predictive when you're driving it in, in track mode it'll downshift by itself and do all the wonderful things and then when you're in manual shift mode because these paddle shifters are hard mounted to the transmission anytime you pull on the paddle it just snaps the shift it's unbelievable how fast this transmission shifts uh, i think they learned their mistake with the eight speed automatic in that when you would pull on that shifter there would be a delay in the shifts so the transmission is just spot on the brake is also amazing i love the brake in this uh, c8 convertible i also liked it in the uh, in the coupe as well and the reason why I like it is it's my kind of brake it's got plenty of bite right at the top of the pedal it, I don't have to squeeze it in order for it to give me a lot of braking power and the fact that I can adjust the feel from from normal to sport and to track it just makes it feel that much more amazing in track mode it's really really sensitive and I could just imagine driving this thing on the track with that type of brake feel now the rest of it the uh, steering is actually very good as well when you are just driving it in this normal mode or tour mode it's actually very easy to drive it has a decent amount of weight but when you put it in sport it turns it up just a little bit more and just reasonable enough to drive on the street now when you put it in track it does get a lot heavier and I would say almost unmanageable or not very friendly for the street I personally would never use the uh, sport steering or the track steering in the Z mode which allows you to tailor things individually on the street so just stay in comfort or in tour or in sport when you're driving it uh, spiritedly on the street unless you really like heavy feedback uh, and heavy weighting in your uh, steering wheel then put it in tour I mean in track so this is truly unbelievable how amazing this car is and I felt this way about the coupe as well and speaking of coupe versus convertible there's no difference uh, or at least not enough for somebody uh, who isn't a professional to tell that 80 pound difference you're not really gonna feel a difference as far as the performance goes I mean it's unbelievable it is truly unbelievable and the brake is in all aspects I truly believe it when they say they developed this car next to the coupe because it feels exactly like the coupe it doesn't feel sloppy or anything just because it's a convertible and the coupe versus uh, convertible topic just pick the one you like because they practically drive the same and have the same levels of performance on the street now I wasn't able to take it in the mountains and do all these wonderful things but here on the street I did nudge it a little bit and it feels totally the same as the coupe now to finish off the video I've always said that I just need three cars I need a Corvette 
I need a 911 and I need some luxury sedan to drive on a daily basis like a S-Class sedan or a 7 Series from BMW. And the Corvette is such a fantastic car in that I'm talking about co comparing it to the 911. The Corvette is so fantastic in comfort mode or in tour mode here. It's more comfortable than a 911. In sport or in sport plus the sporty modes, it's just as sporty and just as stiff as a 911 and gives you that sport feel, especially now more so with the mid engine and the exhaust behind you. So it's just a really remarkable package, this C8 Corvette. And the thing that the 911s always had were or was that they would sell you an entire package, an entire car. And it's not just the overall speed and the performance. It's just how everything is tied together, the interior along with the looks, how everything ties together, all the functions, everything working together as a whole, as a car to deliver an experience. And the 911s are amazing at doing that. They deliver an unbelievable experience. And, and then the C8 was always lacking in that perspective because we know that Corvettes have always been amazing at performance and have surpassed certain levels of 911 performance uh, in just like the regular Corvettes or even like the ZR1 for example. Unbelievable performance. But that overall experience is where it's lacking. And now I'm really happy to say that this is almost as good as a 911 and I say almost with respect to the overall experience because the interior still has some room left there's some improvement they can still make some improvements here to match that overall 911 experience and not to say that that's a bad thing this is truly a remarkable step forward from Chevrolet and as a general Corvette fan it makes me so happy and so excited, so happy that they've done this and so excited for the cars to come in the future like the Z06 and some of these other high performance cars, the hybrid electric version of the Corvette. It's just so amazing that Corvette is able to do this now with the C8 generation. So that's pretty much all I've got to say. Call me a happy camper with the C8 for sure. Anybody who wants this car should just get it. If this is what you want, go get it because it's an amazing car. Uh, but I know I didn't answer all the questions that you might have. So uh, if go and watch my C8 coupe video, that is a lot more in depth uh, with respect to the overall car. Uh, but otherwise, I mean, if you want, just send me a, a comment down below or a message on Instagram and I'll try and answer your question to the best of my ability and as fast as I can. Otherwise, Thank you for watching this video. Until next time, drive steady.